What is up my metaverse family? Welcome back to another YouTube video. Today, we're talking about what the metaverse might look like a decade from now. Guys, our on-chain gaming 100,000 subscriber plaque. Thank you guys so much for subscribing to this channel to learn about the future of the metaverse. As the biggest metaverse exclusive YouTube channel, it has me wondering what will the metaverse look like a decade from now? Will it be Mark Zuckerberg's Facebook owned metaverse where Meta owns all of the metaverse? Or will it be a decentralized metaverse that gives power to the people? Or will it be thousands of disconnected game worlds, a thousand different metaverses that all just have an interacting, interoperable economy where the economies of the metaverse are the only thing that's really connected? Well, we don't really know, although we're gonna be diving deeper into what it might look like in this video, but what we do know is that the metaverse opportunity is insane. In fact, two recent investment banks have come out in the past couple of months saying that the metaverse opportunity is more than $8 trillion. Goldman Sachs. And then we had Morgan Stanley come out and just one up Goldman Sachs saying that they see an $8 trillion metaverse market in China alone, not even counting the rest of the global marketplace. This video is sponsored by FTX, which has the best crypto trading marketplace and NFT marketplace in existence, but more on them later. This video is gonna have three parts. In the first part, we're gonna go over what is the metaverse to catch everyone who's new or isn't sure what the revolution really is up on exactly what is happening here. Second, we're gonna look at the state of the metaverse today, how it actually looks looks today and operates today. And then finally, we're gonna look at part three, which is the metaverse a decade from now. And we're gonna talk about the real economic opportunity and how we can take advantage of it. Part one, what is the metaverse? So this is mostly for new people, but it's important if you want to invest in the metaverse to know what the revolution actually even is. Because if you don't know what the revolution is, you're gonna be investing in this and that and really have no idea if you're investing in the future of the metaverse or not. So the future of the metaverse is ownership in digital worlds. It's ownership for the first time. Now, I think that virtual reality might play a role in the future of the metaverse, but I think that ownership is the bigger revolution. Blockchain security, ownership of items in game where you really own the item, where you can sell it on a third party marketplace and where currencies in these game worlds are real currencies as well. So you'll hear me talking about two terms in a lot of the videos on this channel. One is cryptocurrency. All that means is a in-game currency of like a metaverse coin or something like that, which has verifiable ownership and security on the blockchain. You can see what the max supply is and the inflation rate and literally know the economics of this currency with more certainty than the economics of the US dollar, which is why in books like Ready Player One, the metaverse, the Oasis coin is the most stable currency in the world. I don't think that is far-fetched. So the metaverse, what the revolution is, is blockchain security, ownership of digital items and assets that are verifiably owned by you on the blockchain that the game companies don't own. And that means that if you get rich in the metaverse or you own property in the metaverse that's that's generating income in, in a metaverse world, then that income, that cryptocurrency that you're earning, the game coin in that metaverse, you can sell for US dollar and the property has a real value in US dollar. So that is what is so game changing about the metaverse is just we're gonna get real digital economies and virtual worlds that have a real economic value and impact on your real life. And that is why people are going to be working and playing in the metaverse in the future. And that is why it is an eight trillion plus dollar opportunity. So hopefully that clarifies for you guys what the metaverse is. Let's move to part two now, which is the current state of the metaverse. Guys, to be completely honest, the current state of the metaverse isn't really as exciting as I wish it would be just like the early stages of the internet weren't starting to even grasp the potential of what the internet could be. But now we have so many companies that are valued in the hundreds of billions of dollars that are doing their business 
because of the internet and it takes time. It takes a decade for the metaverse, I think, to really start to formulate into what its potential might eventually be. But right now, to be completely honest, the metaverse is currently a bunch of trailers and promises. And the reality of the metaverse isn't really that much right now. Right now, the metaverse, I think, is primed for investors. It's not really primed for players yet. So for example, let me talk about three absolutely inspirational projects that are gonna be trying to bring the metaverse to consumers. One is Star Atlas. Star Atlas is this grand scale idea of a metaverse where people can work and play in this virtual world that encompasses galaxies. And it's like this whole space opera metaverse where you're gonna be able to live and work and play and go to concerts and like do missions and escort people like in, in spaceships. And like, there's gonna be full economies and it's just this mind blowing idea but in reality so far, it is just an idea. And there are real developers working on real game mechanics, but we have to remember that just because we're getting ownership in the metaverse doesn't mean that games are going to drastically change overnight in how they how they really are. Like this game is still getting built in Unreal Engine, which other games have been built in. And the fact that there's real ownership and, and real value to the currency, like that is revolutionary and game changing. But I think we need to maybe tamper our expectations of like what the metaverse is really gonna be like when we first jump in it. It's not gonna be the oasis from Ready Player One on day one. Another metaverse I'm really excited about is Mirandus, which is this medieval fantasy metaverse being worked on by Gala Games, which is probably uh, the forefront number one company in the metaverse right now, in my opinion. Now it is a private company, so the only way to invest in the metaverse uh, through Gala Games is to actually buy ownership in in these worlds that they're creating. But Mirandus, just like Star Atlas, it is far away. And this game is not even trying to blow us away with graphics. It's trying to blow us away with player ownership, with a real full economy that has real tangible value for everyone who's participating in it in their real lives. And that is why Mirandus is so cool. Plus, in all this technological future space, it kind of feels good to go back into the medieval ages and be a farmer for a little bit, you know? That is a comfortable place to kind of go in the metaverse future. You know, let's go farm in a medieval world and, and uh, slay golems and uh, stuff like that sounds pretty cool. So the metaverse in reality, those are, those are two really cool up and coming projects. Another really exciting up and coming project is like the Sandbox and then Axie Infinity has a land game that is coming out soon as well. But the reality of the metaverse today is kind of like the Axie Infinity game today, which right now is just a card game. There's, there's no real land. And I guess maybe the sandbox game maker is kind of like a metaverse where you can like jump in these different worlds. But so far it's this discombobulated bunch of different games. And it's really just a bunch of different games. It's like the metaverse is kind of just games with ownership is kind of what the metaverse is today. But now let's move to part three, which is what the metaverse might look like a decade from now. And guys, this is the really exciting part. This is why I started this channel is part three. And like, I'm just so hyped for the future and I could not be more ecstatic to be like one of the predominant metaverse channels on YouTube already as, as we're in the birthing stage year one of the metaverse. It's just really, really exciting. So let's talk about where the metaverse is going in part three. So in the intro, I asked the question about will the metaverse be Zuck's metaverse and the meta company owns everything or will it be this decentralized world or is it going to be all of these disconnected worlds like we have now uh, but maybe connected economically because all currencies are you know interchangeable for each other and that is what connects the metaverse economy so it's like a bunch of different game worlds but the economy of the metaverse is one because it's all on the blockchain and everything can be interchanged for everything else and you have all of this value that is connected in one one metaverse economy. I think that's what the potential might look like. But let me tell you why it's actually so game changing and like why so many people I think are going to be working and playing in the metaverse in the future. So for one, there is going to be a lot of economic opportunity in the metaverse. I think whether it's Zuck's metaverse, which is going to play a part, it's not gonna be all of the metaverse, but it's going to play a part in the future of the metaverse, whether you like it or not, or whether or not it's these massive DC 
decentralized metaverses like Alluvium, uh, which is a metaverse coming out very soon, and is actually owned and governed by the players in that metaverse. Option three, this is the most likely, is that it's like it's a mix of all of these worlds with the connected economy. No matter how it turns out, the opportunities in all of these metaverses are going to be immense. Because what you might not understand is that digital goods are becoming a bigger and bigger portion of the economy in general. And so far, these digital goods that we're talking about aren't even really owned by players. Two prime examples, Fortnite, League of Legends, and actually a third uh, example, Roblox. All three of these games sell billions of dollars, just billions of dollars in digital goods that the players don't actually even own, that the players cannot resell to each other, and that if the players try to sell for real money, can get their accounts banned, and they just lose everything. Congratulations. That is what the digital goods are today that we're spending our money on, and it's already billions of dollars. So now imagine Imagine when the digital goods that you're buying are rare, like they could be one of one or one of 10 with the promise there will never be another one of these things. So they could be rare items in the metaverse that have real utility and use that you can actually resell to other players and you can resell even on a third party marketplace not connected to the game at all. When this is the sort of digital good that we're buying, when the metaverse, when real ownership is really here, that is why banks like Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley are predicting that the, this metaverse opportunity is going to be so many trillions of dollars because the percentage of the GDP that is digital goods versus real goods is going to continue to increase. And like when it's like 23% of all goods sold are these digital goods, like Goldman Sachs is, is predicting in their report, like that is like an insane mind blowing figure. So that means there's going to be opportunity though in these metaverses. For example, in the game of Mirandus, I own a weapon shop and this weapon shop is a one of five majestic weapon shops. So there's only five players in this world that have the license to uh, build one of these majestic weapon shops, but I'm going to need to hire a lot of people to actually make and potentially sell these weapons. And I'm gonna have to be hiring people to like gather the resources, the raw materials in the world for me to be able to build these weapons. And because I'm going to be able to sell these weapons for real money, because it's a real economy, I'm going to be paying people real money for playing this game and finding resources for me as well. And that means that like the world changes. I mean, we already saw how crazy the Philippines went over Axie Infinity when they could start earning way more than their local minimum wage in Axie. Like everyone in the Philippines jumped on board so quick and like grocery stores and stuff started accepting SLP and stuff in the Philippines because of how many people started making their livings in the metaverse. And that is just one economy and one example of like the, the first ever game even trying play to earn. And then it had a lot of problems and they're working through things currently, but that's just one example. So the economic opportunity is going to be massive. And I think a decade from now, we are going to see a big percentage of people. Now that percentage, I'm not, I'm not sure what a big percentage means. Maybe it's 10% a decade from now, or maybe the S curve like surprises everyone. And it's like 25% or 30% of people are working in the metaverse. Like that could be absolutely mind blowing, but no matter what, more and more people are going to start working their jobs in the metaverse instead of in real life. Life. And that might make you wonder, well, then what happens to like the, the jobs that like we, we need people to work now? Like, does that mean there's going to be like no goods in real life or things like that? But actually this is solving a real problem, which is that automation is actually removing a lot of jobs. Hundreds of millions of jobs are predicted to get automated away every single year going forward for a long time. And when you look at things like the Tesla bot and how Tesla factories are so automated already, but if Tesla starts selling a robot that can do like a lot of human labor that humans don't want to do, like we need to find other jobs for people. And I think the metaverse is going to provide a lot of this opportunity. Okay. So now we get to the question that all you guys 
I'm sure have been waiting for, which is, okay, well, how do I profit off of this? How do I make money from the metaverse if it's gonna be so massive and so incredible? Guys, now I'm excited to quickly tell you about the sponsor of this video, FTX. FTX is one of the biggest cryptocurrency exchanges in the world in terms of volume and daily active users. And what I love about FTX and what I think makes them the best cryptocurrency exchange in the world is that they have the lowest trading fees of any platform globally. And not only can you trade cryptocurrency on FTX, but you can also trade Ethereum and Solana NFTs on FTX. So if you are either new to cryptocurrency and want to just create an account so that you can buy crypto for the first time, or whether you're already an experienced crypto enthusiast who's super excited and prepared for the metaverse, you can upgrade by creating an FTX account and starting to trade on the cheapest platform that exists. Plus, if you guys sign up through our link to the mobile app, then you can get free crypto crypto on every trade over $10, which is super cool. Or if you sign up through our link for the web app, you can get 5% off on every single trading fee, which like I said, is already the cheapest trading fees of any platform in the world. So it's a great exchange and a great deal if you sign up through our links. So I highly recommend it. Plus you're supporting FTX who's supporting on-chain gaming and we are supporting the future of the metaverse. So if you want to support this whole ecosystem, uh, then yeah, create an account through our links below and enjoy trading on the best, quickest, and cheapest crypto exchange in the world. So thanks FTX for sponsoring this and let's get back to the video. So here is my advice to you. And, and first of all, I am not an investment advisor at all. I'm just a kid on the internet who loves games and is so excited about this revolution uh, that, that is happening. So do your own research. But what I have personally been doing is investing in the cryptocurrencies and NFT businesses that are going to exist inside the metaverse. And these businesses businesses uh, can kind of include land as well. So I've been investing in the currencies of some of these metaverses that I really believe in. I've been investing in businesses inside these metaverses that I really believe in. And I've been buying limited land in these metaverses that I really believe in. And because all of these things are so early, if any of these metaverses actually are super successful and have millions of players someday, the appreciation of some of these assets is going to be mind blowing. For example, Mirandus, which is the medieval fantasy, massive multiplayer online role-playing game that I've mentioned several times throughout this video. There are less than 2,000 land deeds in the entire metaverse of Mirandus, and there will never be more land deeds. So if you think that this game might someday have a million players or something like that, and there are only a thousand land deeds. Now, most players aren't gonna need land deeds, by the way, the land ownership in Mirandus is more for like operating the towns and cities like operating the weapon shops and stuff that I was talking about. Most players are just gonna be like using these player owned shops, just like a normal MMO. Uh, you might be using an NPC shop. Now it's a player owned shop that you're actually interacting with and as players producing all the goods that you're buying because it's a real full economy. But like I said, there's only 2000 land deeds here. So if this is a super massive robust economy with a big gross domestic product in this metaverse world, like some of these land NFTs are gonna be 10Xing, 100Xing. I mean, who really even knows because the potential is so big and it is a lot of speculation now, which means a lot of the prices now are gonna be lower than they're going to be once all of these assets actually start generating revenue. I would, uh, recommend checking out maybe my top 10 video on the top 10 metaverse games that are coming out in 2022, which is this year, as a starting place to look into what worlds you want to invest in. And then if they have a coin, uh, look at what the market cap of their coin is. And if you think that it has upside potential, uh, then buy that coin and look at what some of the NFTs are. See what businesses you can buy. See what land is available in these worlds. Do your research. See what is actually limited in quantity, that there's not going to be any additional amounts of of produced in the future. And that is where you see the price appreciation because when the supply is finite, but the demand is growing, that is when an asset starts uh, growing in appreciation. But then utility is also very important because like a lot of the things that I'm buying in Mirandus or Star Atlas or Axie Infinity or the Sandbox, these metaverse worlds that I'm buying NFTs in, I'm buying NFTs which uh, just stands for non-fungible token. It's just an item on the blockchain. It's an item that you really own, like I was saying in the part one, what is the metaverse? Um, but all these NFTs, 
have real utility, which means they're gonna have real uses for me. I'm buying them because I actually want to use them. And that is like my number one criteria for buying these NFTs. I'm investing in NFTs that I actually want to own in the future. And that I think is actually going to, to mean that I'm buying the NFTs that are actually best to flip in the future because they have the most real value. So there you have it guys. If you enjoyed this video and thought that some of my advice was insightful or useful, then remember to drop a big thumbs up on the videos that will help us out a ton in the YouTube algorithm. And uh, yeah, we really appreciate your thumbs up. And then if you watch this whole video and you're not subscribed yet, well, what are you doing? Make sure you hit subscribe and click that notification bell so that you do not miss any future content on how to make money in the future of the metaverse. This channel is all about the future of the metaverse and play to earn gaming and, and real ownership. I'm just so excited about it. So make sure you don't miss future content. I think there's like 70% of you guys who watch these videos aren't subscribed, which just blows my mind. So make sure you're not in that 70% anymore. Until next time, everyone, have fun roaming the metaverse. <laughs>